Hi, everyone, and welcome to Developing Extraordinary Apps with Firebase. Uh, I'm James. I'm the co-founder and was the CEO of Firebase until we joined Google uh, about six months ago. Uh, I want to start on a little bit of a personal note. Uh, so six years ago today, I moved to the Bay Area, and the very first thing I did was come to I.O. 2009. Uh, a lot has changed in six years, and it's really great to be back here uh, for my second I.O., and this time speaking to all of you. Uh, so we're going to have a, a brief overview of Firebase and kind of how we think about application development. But before we go deep, uh, before we go deep, I want to go broad. So 10 years ago, if you were starting a startup, you had to buy physical servers. You'd call up Dell or HP and you'd say, hello, I'd like a box with a Xeon processor and a terabyte of RAM, and they would ship you a physical server. You had to find a colo facility and maybe every now and again call the nice people at the colo facility and ask them to reset your physical server. And all of this seems unimaginable today. The cost of these made them inaccessible to most, and the time to set up, operate, manage, and maintain seems stunning as well. So it begs the question, if this looks crazy, what are we going to look like today to software engineers 10 years from now? And if history is any guide, we're going to look antiquated. Even though we've made huge strides, the tools and the processes that we use to build software today are going to feel clunky. So where is software development going? We think the developer is going to have more and more leverage. You'll be able to do more with less. Specifically, you'll focus on high-level concepts like users, data, and tasks. So how is Google going to help you do this? Today, we'll be looking at some offerings from Google Cloud Platform. We'll be looking at an overview of Firebase, going into a feature deep dive, and then we've got some exciting announcements for you as well. So let's start with Google Cloud Platform. Remember all those physical servers? With GCP, you do not need them. GCP provides compute, storage, data analytics, and several other services that help today's developers be more productive. I'm going to highlight a few of them. First is Google Compute Engine, or GCE. GCE abstracts the physical machine and gives you a virtual one. This is also known as infrastructure as a service. You pay nothing for the hardware, and then you pay as you go. With GCP, this is in one-minute increments, which is pretty awesome. An abstraction above that is containers. Uh, so with containers, you don't have to think about the operational concerns of a, phys of a virtual machine. Uh, can we go forward in the notes? Uh, so containers basically mean uh, that you can run software without thinking about underlying hardware. And with Google Container Engine, uh, you can run your code on a cluster of machines. And that's done with the open source project Kubernetes, which Google released last June. One level of abstraction above that is platform as a service with App Engine. With App Engine, you further don't need to think uh, about memory, or CPU, OS upgrades. You just give it your backend code, and App Engine takes it, deploys it, runs it, and scales it. And this makes developers significantly more productive. And so GCP has some awesome offerings for server-side and backend developers. But what if you're a mobile developer or a web developer? working on the client side of your application? Well, it turns out that Google has a service for you. And that brings us to Firebase. For those of you who aren't aware, let's do a quick overview. Firebase is a platform to help you rapidly build really great mobile and web applications. One of the first things you do when building an app is you choose how to build its back end. Firebase has three services user authentication, a real-time database, and static hosting to help you build your application without needing to spin up servers and without needing to manage complex infrastructure. This saves you an immense amount of time. But more importantly, it lets you focus on creating a great user experience. Your users do not care if the code to shard your database is elegant. They care if you're elegantly solving their problem. Firebase has SDKs for iOS, Android, and the web. This allows you to access Firebase directly from your client. With client-side code, though, you often need to structure and maintain it. And this is why we've built deep integrations with these great front-end web frameworks. If you want to access Firebase from a server, you can use our server-side libraries or wrappers around our REST API in these languages. 
And with our REST API, you can access Firebase from anywhere you can do HTTP. So how did Firebase start? Well, three and a half years ago, we saw some game developers having some trouble setting up their backend infrastructure. All they wanted to do was build a really cool game. They wanted to make awesome artwork. They wanted to grow their MAUs. And they didn't want to think about the intricacies of a distributed real-time system. Uh, so we started Firebase. And today, this is one of our customers, Roll20, who's built their entire game on us. They are just one of 190,000 developers who are building their applications on Firebase. And Firebase has one and a half million devices, end user devices, sending data through us at any given time. These are some of the customers that use us. They range from ambitious startups all the way up to large enterprises. So that's a quick overview of Firebase. Now let's look at our features. Authentication, database, and hosting. Data is the lifeblood of any application. So we'll start off with the real-time database. Firebase has a NoSQL JSON database. One of the most exciting features about this is it does data synchronization. Whenever the client device writes to Firebase, we synchronize that data with the Firebase servers and then push it down to every other device who cares. This is fantastic for this multi-device world that we live in, where you pick up your smartphone and put down your tablet and expect to pick up where you left off. It's also fantastic for this world of intermittent internet connectivity. When you go into an elevator or go through a tunnel, you expect your application to still work. And since with Firebase, your SDKs have a local view of the data, a local copy of the data, in memory on the device, it means your application does exactly this. But it's not just synchronization. It's real-time synchronization. We push those updates to other devices in milliseconds. And this allows you to build great real-time collaborative applications with Firebase. Google Docs has kind of set the standard for what you can do with real-time collaboration. And now with Firebase, you can build these great experiences without needing a huge engineering team. But instead of telling you, why don't I show you? So we'll switch over to the camera. And we're going to show an application called TalkBoard. TalkBoard is built by Citrix, and it's used in schools and companies with over hundreds of thousands of users around the world. So here I can select multiple boards, and I'm going to jump into this one called I.O. Now with Firebase, these two devices are uh, uh, connected over Wi-Fi. When I write on one, it'll sync the data up to Firebase and push it down to the other device in milliseconds. So I can say, hi, I.O. I'll flip that around so we're both looking at the same thing. I'll find the appropriate shade of blue. Oh, let's get a bit of a fatter stencil there. Go high I.O. I'll find, find a nice yellow. Draw a little sun up here. Uh, so you can, uh, this is all vector data, and it's all stored as JSON inside Firebase. And you can see just how quickly uh, those updates propagate uh, and just how easy it is uh, to build those collaborative features. So we'll go back to the slides. Uh, <laughs> thank you. There are other couple of great things we should note about the Firebase database. Uh, the first is that it's accessible directly from your client, so you don't need to talk to a server. Uh, the client can just go directly to the database. Second, or, and, and this is how easy it is to do so. So this is actually some Android code. Uh, first of all, we uh, create a reference to a location inside Firebase. Uh, I'm doing that up top. And then I can just call ref.setValue. Uh, and I'm passing in a string there that says hi IO. This is all the code you need to write to Firebase. Uh, the Firebase database is just one JSON object. Uh, so it's in a format that you're familiar with. And it's in a format that all of the client-side devices that you work with already use. Um, it's schemaless, and so it's super flexible. So you can structure data how you like. Uh, if you've already used Mongo, if you already used Couchbase, Firebase database is going to feel really familiar to you. Uh, and finally, every piece of data has its own URL. JSON's a tree structure. URLs are a tree structure. So we've mapped every piece of data, every number, every Boolean, every string to its own URL. Uh, this gives you several great benefits. First of all, it's intuitive. Uh, so you can reference data with an absolute path or with a relative path. And it's all in a format that you know and understand. Uh, second of all, you can use uh, those URLs as REST endpoints. So you can manage and manipulate from REST in addition to the client libraries. 
Uh, and finally, it's browser compatible. So you can actually punch those URLs into a web browser and you see a graphical view of your data. Uh, and this is fantastic if you're debugging. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about accessing Firebase from the client. Uh, so typically, when you build applications, uh, you're building them in a three-tier architecture. Uh, so your device talks to an application server, and that in turn then talks to a database. As I mentioned, this isn't the case with Firebase. Uh, we view application development as moving to a two-tier model, where the device speaks directly to the Firebase database. Uh, and this gives you a couple of benefits. First, it allows you to do the real-time and the offline mode that I mentioned, but it also speeds up development. There's no server boilerplate code that's shuffling data between your database and your application server. Uh, when you add a feature, you don't need to go and add new server code or add new tests to that code. So it really does speed up development. Uh, and then you're also offloading scaling to Firebase. Uh, so you don't need to re-architect your server code to scale. Firebase already guides you into a pattern uh, where your operations on your data scale linearly with the size of your data set. This is how most high-scale uh, produ high production apps are written anyway, and you're doing it from the very beginning. Uh, with a two-tier architecture, um, you may be asking, how do I run server code if I want to run some trusted code or if I want to uh, do some heavy lifting that I don't want the, the edge phone to do? Well, you can just hook a server up to the Firebase database directly, and you can also connect it with third-party APIs. And you may be thinking to yourself out there in the audience, OK, that's great, but if my device is talking directly to my Firebase database, how do I secure it? And the answer is with our flexible rules language. Uh, so this language lets you define how your data can be structured and who can access it. Uh, these live on our server, and here's an example of them. Uh, so here in my rules language, I'm saying the foo node can be read by anyone, it can be written by anyone, and then I have a validate rule uh, that enforces the schema. So it's got to be a string, and it's got to be less than 100 characters. These are all in one place. They're stored in the Firebase servers, and they're all JSON. Again, a, a standard you know. You can upload them with our CLI or edit them directly at firebase.com. So we've taken a look at the Firebase database. Now let's move to Firebase authentication. Most every app has the concept of a user. Unfortunately, the first thing you do when you set up a user system uh, set up an app is have to write a user authentication system or fight with OAuth. With Firebase, we uh, enable you to easily implement email and password uh, and then connect with third-party providers like Google, Facebook, Twitter, and GitHub. And you can do this really easily. This is the code in JavaScript to implement Firebase uh, uh, Facebook login with Firebase authentication. I create a reference, as we saw earlier, and I call ref.auth with OAuth pop-up and I pass it the string Facebook, give it a callback. That's it. I can change that to Twitter. I can change that to Google. And that's all I need to do to implement uh, login with a third party provider. Really is that simple. So what if you're asking, how do I actually integrate it with my existing user system? I've already built one. Uh, and the answer is you can easily use one of our eight server side libraries to integrate. You just generate a JSON web token, another open standard, and that'll tell Firebase who your user is. But our Firebase authentication also works with our security rules that I just mentioned. This be, uh, enables you to build uh, secure uh, applications with uh, user authentication systems. So let's say we have a user's, user's node. Uh, $UID basically specifies that we can interact with any user entry in the user's node. It's saying that anyone can read a user's profile, but only the person logged in can modify their own profile. It's that easy with just a few lines of code. Finally, let's look at Firebase hosting. It's production-grade hosting for developers. So Firebase hosting was designed for mission-critical sites and apps, and we built it for reliability and scale. It runs some great sites like Firebase.com, Angular, and the Polymer team use it as well. It's backed by a global CDN, so you get pops around the world. It's SSL by default. We even provision the SSL cert for you, so you don't have to go off and buy the $150 cert and it has custom domain support, so you can hook it up to your own custom domain. Uh, you just go into your terminal, go to the, C, uh, the directory you want, call Firebase init, and then you can call Firebase deploy, and it'll push that content up to your own firebaseapp.com URL or your own custom URL. So we've seen Firebase authentication, real-time database, and Firebase hosting. Now let's take a look at some of the customers who use Firebase. 
instacart is one of the rising stars in silicon valley they let you do grocery delivery from your mobile app to your door in hours and they've been using firebase since the beginning uh, they've raised over 300 million dollars from top tier vcs uh, and they use firebase for a number of things uh, you can collaboratively edit your shopping cart uh, with your roommate or spouse you can talk to your shopper while they're in the store and uh, you can also uh, see where your order is with their live order location tracking. The next customer is a little bit of a different profile. Uh, so Sky News was the UK's first 24-hour news network. Uh, they're based in London. They have news bureaus around the globe. And on May the 7th, the UK held a general election. Uh, for those of you unfamiliar with British parliamentary procedure, uh, until this year, uh, an election would be called within a five-year window, and as soon as it was called, uh, then six weeks later, the election happened. Uh, so this six weeks election cycle kind of makes some democracies I know feel like a walk in the park. Uh, Sky News uh, used Firebase to synchronize election data from their iOS app, their Android app, and their web app. So that on the night of May the 7th and the morning of May the 8th, the millions of people from around the world who tuned in to watch the most watched election in UK history got the updates with Firebase. Uh, we're really excited that this software was built in a matter of weeks by their team and achieved this scale. Next up, we have Citrix. So Citrix uses this in some of their flagship applications like GoToMeeting and GoToAssist. But one of their newest applications uses this too. Uh, today, I'm excited to welcome on the stage Gus Pinto, a senior director at Citrix, who's going to tell us a little bit about how Citrix is using us in concierge. Thanks, James. So we'll switch over to the... Uh... Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm really jazzed to be uh, joining the Firebase team and, uh, and James here. Um, We've built a wonderful relationship um, that expands on the original relationship we had with Google. You see Citrix, um, we've, we have a pretty mission critical um, task at hand, okay? We power over 400 million workspace users every single day. And one thing that we did notice is that the vast majority of our mobile user, um, our users are going mobile, are getting the work done on the mobile uh, workspace. And it really dawned upon us that the vehicles in which we support customers today on mobile devices is antiquated and it's really, really bad. I mean, to the point of being frustrating uh, to the most part. Um, things like the best thing we can come up with sometimes was just putting a button in our apps, you know, that s sends an email form to somebody when the problems that we have, you know, are happening right now. Um, that's why we've created Concierge. You really just reimagine the communication flow and the way companies connect with their customers and employees. Um, and we launched it two weeks ago, uh, and beyond our wildest expectations, we sold out our tech preview in the very first day. Um, and quite honestly, we couldn't have done that without Google. Um, now, we do leverage a lot of components of Google uh, across our technologies. You know, in this case, in the case of Concierge, we use WebRTC and Chrome. Um, we, we have an SDK for Android. We, use, we leverage Cast. But at the very heart of Concierge, and really what enabled us to get here, um, was Firebase. You know, it's, it's, it's like that. It's, I say it's in the heart of our product because it's the ticking component that makes everything flow within a product from user authentication as James alluded to the real-time data from end to end we had to reinvent the inbox for for agents uh, our chat communication and so many other components all the way to just like signaling for WebRTC we really rely heavily on Firebase and I could just spend the time here telling you about this I'd rather I show you what this looks like and what we've managed to accomplish with our partnership so um, I think there's nothing better than to uh, truly show uh, a live product, nothing more dangerous <laughs> and better than to show a live product. So we, uh, we brought a customer product to show you guys. Uh, and it's from a company called Modernizing Medicine. 
And what those guys are doing in their own environment in, in the medical space is reinventing and reimagining how physicians interact with patients. And they're doing it from anywhere and bringing the power of electronic medical record systems to mobile. Now, what I want to do is fire it up here. And uh, hopefully you guys can see it good. I'll log in. Um, now, with concierge, what we've done was as part of reimagining how we would support customers on the go, was first something that actually Google's very keen on, which is context. Um, it, you know, we're trying to get support in today's apps, you know, whether it's the email form or kind of going out of your apps, scrambling, find a 1-800 number, calling somebody, um, and just eventually being frustrated, giving up and going bash them on Twitter. Um, it's rather frustrating. So we figured that the place to start is what makes our products really smart, which are the apps. Um, in the case of, um, of modernizing medicine, what they've done is they've integrated Concierge, which is a simple SDK you plug in your app, um, and with a one line of code, you know, just fire up an entire suite of, of technologies that allows you to communicate real time with your customers. And in the case of real time, we mean from, with the push of a button, you can get um, audio, like a normal internet call right within your app, a video, so you can see the representative that's helping you in real time, or just a simple chat if you don't have fun of, of having a, a conversation uh, through audio and video. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and start a new visit. And, and simple things like, say, I'm a physician. The application has been updated. Something moved and changed, and I don't know what it is. And I'm a doctor, and I'm kind of lost, and I don't want to go to a consultation with my patient and, and be like, I don't know what's going on. I didn't know you were a doctor, Gus. Um, I am a doctor to make believe. OK. You're like Doogie Howser. <laughs> so what I'm going to do here is I start a new consultation, but I forgot um, with this new UI how to properly document this visit. So what the guys from uh, ModMed done is they embedded our SDK into their product. Um, it took them less than 20 minutes. Trust me, the, the developer of the product is here in the audience, and he can hold me up to it. Um, and with the push of a button, it comes up a, a, their own UI that for, confirms that you actually want to get support. And what that does, when I press this button, it goes out there and establishes a connection on, on CRG. Um, and as you can see, uh, can we switch back to the notebook? Thank you. You know, that puts a, a instantly a new session within uh, our inbox, what we call where the ticketing system happens. Um, and James will be my support agent. And I'd be happy to. So I'll go ahead and answer the call here. And I've got an incoming call. So I'll accept. So voila. So at, right within our app, um, we have a live support agent. Now, can we switch back real quick to the, 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 the wolf? Now, you see that we can, let me hit OK here to confirm. Now we're sharing my screen. So you can see that James, I can just move him around the screen, and it's really swift, and he can hear me, and I can hear him. Uh, but one thing that happened here was just getting the communication flow between uh, the customer and the company. It was not enough. There didn't tools really to get proper support for mobile customers really didn't exist. So we had to create something new. And we call that Copilot, which is the ability for you to share everything that's in the screen of the customer's computer in real time, whether it's an iOS device or Android device or a web app, as well as the camera, because most of these devices have camera. And sometimes the problem is not necessarily in the app itself, but in the real world and something that you want to interact with, as well as you know information like what the device version is and um, what the battery level, what the Wi-Fi, and things of such nature. You know, so, so, so how can I help you today? What seems to be the problem? So I, I forgot how to document the, um, I forgot to do how to document uh, a session with, uh, with this patient. And because since the UI changed, I really don't know how it is. Uh, you, you're a terrible doctor. Uh, so, doctor. So if you want to start an exam, <laughs> uh, what you're going to want to do is click this exam button here in the upper left. And I'll just highlight that for you. Cool. So you see that right on the, on the iPad, whatever he did, he could draw on my screen and guide me to completion. And we call that feature Touch Assist. Um, he can actually see where I tap on the screen in real time. So if we switch back to the, uh, the notebook, he can see the drawing. He can see he can simply clear the drawing. Cool. So I'll clear that with the eraser. Yeah. Once I touch where I need to touch. And all the touches that I do, I perform, they show up in real time, including any updates I make to the application. I'm just going to give her a little hair. <laughs> um, I could totally be a doctor, too. 
Um, and, and then from here, you know, we expect to be able to drive problem solutions much faster than ever before. Um, you know, so this is sort of, this is concierge. Um, it's, it's in the market today. You can uh, go to concierge.cloud.com. Uh, it's, it's available for both Android and iOS. And uh, we believe that's really gonna transform the way companies and connect with their uh, customers and employees. Um, and we really couldn't have built this without the help of Firebase because um, we really had a hard set of problems to tackle. Uh, and instead of trying to reinvent the wheel, we made, you know, we made a commitment to, uh, to build this on a solid platform that would scale for us at the enterprise grade levels that we really needed to. So, so that's concierge. Awesome. And take Firebase for a spin. Uh, you will absolutely love it. Cool. Thank you, James. Thanks for your time, Gus. Really absolutely. appreciate it. Thank you. Cool. Uh, so we've, we've seen how Instacart, Sky News, and Citrix uh, use Firebase to power some of their applications. Uh, now let's get to some of the, the really exciting bits. Uh, we've got a couple of great announcements today. And the first is a new feature for our real-time database. Uh, typically, when you're building a mobile application, it's just consuming a REST API from a server. And in this architecture, when you lose your internet connection, the app just stops working. Uh, and this is a terrible user experience. We learned earlier that the Firebase client SDKs keep a local copy of your data in memory on your phone. And so this allows your uh, app to stay responsive when you lose your uh, connection temporarily. But today, we're improving on that. And we're improving on that by announcing full mobile offline support. Uh, this comes in two flavors. The first of all is disk persistence. Uh, so when you go offline, your SDKs now not only store uh, into memory, but they also persist to disk. This means you can completely quit your application, and when you restart it, your data is still available. Uh, when you come back online, it resyncs, and the entire application uh, brings you back up to speed and back up to the current state of the world. Uh, let's hop over to the Wolf, and let's show you this in action. Uh, so this has actually already been implemented on TalkBoard. Uh, so this time, let's play a little game of tic-tac-toe. Uh, but all of a sudden, I lose my internet connection. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to turn off the Wi-Fi. I'm going to go to the Wi-Fi. And I'll go back to TalkBoard. Um, so now we've, we've lost the internet connection. So uh, the first thing I'll do is I'll start playing again. I realize the other player isn't connected, so I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and win the game because they're not there. Um, and then I'll, I'll go ahead and quit my application entirely. I'd say I'm, I'm off climbing a mountain. Uh, meanwhile, the other, the other player is like, Where, what actually happened? Where did you go? Which draws a question mark. Uh, a while later, I spin the application back up, go out. Fire it up again, go into talk board. Uh, here's my game of tic-tac-toe. And then I turn the Wi-Fi back on. Oh, well, first of all, you've seen that I quit the application, the data was persisted to disk, restarted the application, everything is still there. Then when I reconnect to Wi-Fi, turn it back on. This, by the way, is the only demo of my career that if the Wi-Fi actually drops out, it would be a good thing. Uh, and as we regain Wi-Fi, everything sinks back. And we're up to the current state of the world. We really need to focus on mobile as developers, and features like this let you do exactly that. Uh, we'll go back to the slides. Another great thing is that this feature is available with just one line of code. This is the Android, the Objective-C, and the Swift code that you need to enable disk persistence. Because Firebase Database is built on a synchronization approach, we've really built it from the beginning to be able to do this. And we're excited that this GA today. The next piece of full mobile offline support is Keep Synced. Keep Synced is the ability for you to specify data that should be prefetched and kept up to date in case you go offline. So a good example of this is if you're building a social network 
and you want to keep the profiles of your closest friends up to date so that you can get at them if you're offline. Keep synced is the feature that would allow you to do this and see their wall posts from the last time you had an internet connection. This is, again, just one line of code to implement. Here's the Android, the Objective-C, and the Swift code to do it again. Um, with both disk persistence and with keep synced, if your users go through tunnels, climb a mountain, or get on a plane, your applications continue to work seamlessly. And since it's just one line of code, this continues to be a hallmark of Firebase, our simplicity and our ease of use. And you can now deliver these features that your users are coming to expect. The second announcement we have today is around making Firebase compatible with an exciting new technology. Firebase is just one piece of a complete application. As I mentioned earlier, client-side code often needs to be structured and managed, and that's why we've built integrations with Angular, Ember, React. But an exciting new technology called React Native was announced a couple of months ago. And today, we're excited to announce that Firebase works with React Native and can be the back end for your React Native-powered app. Uh, React Native is an open source library from Facebook. There's a huge community growing around it. It already has 14,000 stars uh, on GitHub, and it's used by Facebook in their group's product. Uh, Firebase and React work really well with each other. React updates your UI when there's a change in your data model. Firebase delivers a real-time update to your data model. The pairing is quite elegant. You can get started by NPM installing Firebase. And then inside your React Native code, just require Firebase, and you're off to the races. We really can't wait to see what you build. So we've seen our mobile offline support and our React announcements. Uh, we've seen what Google Cloud Platform can do to help you more productive. An overview of Firebase and a feature deep dive, heard from Citrix, and seen some announcements. Um, really focusing on user experience, not infrastructure, is going to be the way developers build apps in the future, focusing on tasks, users, and data. Firebase is enabling developers to deliver extraordinary apps with features that end users expect right out of the box. With Firebase, what used to take months now takes hours. Uh, we live in, in pretty exciting times, and we're excited uh, that individual developers and small teams can make a massive difference. Uh, if you build something with Firebase, please do tell us about it. We'd love, to, we'd love to hear what you build. Uh, we'll be around all day. Uh, we have office hours at 4 PM. There's some swag over on these tables. Uh, we're here in the yellow shirts. Please come and find us and say hello, and uh, enjoy the rest of your I.O. Thank you.